Hey there and welcome back to my Lightroom Quick Start Bootcamp. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a little more detail about how I do my files and my categorization of all my files. And we'll just look at a few options for you to be able to choose for yourself. And what I like to make sure we understand is do something that works for you. Let's get started. As we're looking at things that work for us with file naming and categorizing and how we put away our files for long-term storage, we need to think of a couple of things. First off, does it work for you? Does it make sense? Is it something that you'll be able to easily get back to and be able to find those images when you need to find them? It's hugely important that you're able to find those images. When someone is saying, hey, do you have an image of Mount Rainier? like, you know, from an airplane like I have here. And does it have a certain mountain in the background? I would guess that that's Mount Hood, given the fact that I was flying to Seattle on this one and Mount Hood is south of Rainier. So if I'm, if I'm categorizing my images appropriately, then I'm able to say, yes, I know right where that is. Certainly there's other things you can do and we'll get into keywording after a little while, but you can see here, this image happens to not be keyworded at all. And so in some cases, I'm a little bit lazy in that sense where I don't keyword absolutely everything. What I do is I go through a certain process where I categorize everything by location. I am a travel photographer and so location is huge for where I and how I think about my images. When I'm thinking about a certain image, like in, in this case, this particular shot, I know it's from Texas. I, I also know that because here is the file name down here in the bottom where it says USTX. So I just know because of that code, I know it's in Texas. And so if you were to come to me and say, Brent, what do you have from Texas? Well, let's take a look. I'd be able to come in here to my photos. I'd be able to go into probably it's going to be in mid-America. That's an idea. Nope, it's not there. So maybe it's U.S. Eastern. And so I'm going to look further and say, okay, where are my Texas images? And oh, here's one for Southwest. If I had worked the Southwest a whole lot, here we are. Here are my Texas images. You can see here where the system, I guess you could say, is not exactly perfect because I tend to categorize things I get more detail as I have more and more images from that region. So if I were a resident of Texas, I would have all sorts of regions just about Texas, and then you'd, you'd be able to see this completely differently. It would be centered on, as it were, Texas per se. I used to be a resident of Washington, and so that is, let's go up here to the Northwest. You can see I have a long list of Northwest items. And so this is how I categorize my photos, where I have U.S. W.A. O.N.P. as Olympic National Park. U.S. W.A. N.C. is North Cascades. Now here's one that's not as perfect as I probably should do it. U.S. W.A. for United States, Washington. And then I put in a little L.W. there for Leavenworth. So I took these three pictures in Leavenworth, Washington. Today, I would count that as something more along the lines of central Washington or something a little less specific to Leavenworth. So yes, there's a little bit of a learning curve, I guess you can say, in identifying something like this. How detailed are you going to exactly get? Let's take a look at another one I do here. USWAPA. So this is the Palouse. And it's going to be really easy for me as well since the Palouse region also includes a little bit of, of um, Idaho. It's, it could be easy for me to go ahead and tuck in a few images from Idaho there. Although you'll notice I do have US IDPA, so that's Idaho Palouse. But there's only three images coming in from here. I can guarantee you some of these images, at least from 2020, are in Idaho. In fact, this, this uh, school structure here, if I were to go to the map function, we would be able to look at this and say, yep, it's it's in Idaho here. See, here's the Idaho-Washington border, and here's exactly where that school is. And I know where that is because I have a GPS in my camera, the 5D Mark IV. So this system is, it, it works for me. Because if you were to say, Brent, 
give me an image from the Palouse, I would pretty much know to go here because I'm always thinking about the Washington side of Palouse, even though, yes, it's not exactly perfect and I can always look at the GPS data and I can know then with specificity exactly where it is. But this is a system that works for me and I highly recommend you develop a system that works for you. All right, so let's back up a little bit and take a look at this for real in the catalog. Since I am in my real catalog and you can see exactly what I'm doing here versus the sample that I started in this first couple of videos in this Lightroom Quick Start Bootcamp series. Now let's see exactly what my process is. So, and then I'm gonna show you at the end another process that is highly recommended if you are someone who wants to keep absolutely everything because I do not keep absolutely everything. I'm one who actually will delete about 85% of the images I shoot. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. It depends on the shoot. It depends on a lot of parameters, but in general, about 85% just deleted. It's trash. It's deleted. It doesn't deserve to see the light of day. So that's where we start to say, well, how do you value your images? How do you decide to keep your images? Well, first off, if I think like in this image, I decided to keep it because it's a very, it's a plain shot, but it's a very good shot of this structure and it's got a little bit of space up above. It would make a great poster, a great magazine cover. If I were to ever get wind of someone that says, hey, Brent, I need that schoolhouse in the Palouse. I have a magazine cover or whatever this would be something that would work really good. I can also see this image as something that says, hey, what if I wanted to incorporate a tutorial about sky replacement? What if I wanted to do something else about spray painting or putting some other image or some other, just something else digital imaging oriented? This would be a great image for doing that. So I see value in an image, not in the fact that this is like an, the best image ever of this subject, but I see where in the future I could potentially use it for this, for that idea. And so I start to see value in though, and then that makes me want to keep it. All right. Then, of course, I have other images like this one that are just really engaging to me. Visually, it's very engaging. And so I want to keep that image all around and, and images like that. All right. So my process to begin with is all about this item right here called initial imports. And of course, that's just and odd that's something for my photo classes and they're whatever we'll, we'll try and um, hump over jump over that and, and, and skip to the to what I'm really trying to get at and that is we can see here uh, 2021 on New Year's Day we can see I did a shoot and you can see I've uh, I've done the rejection of some of these images and I've done some pics of these images we've seen how that happens and then here is an image I've already done with some edits and I didn't even find I'll name it yet and I still and I already have it edited so what's going to happen here is these images that build uh, that make this image they're going to have their own unique file names and this is going to have its own unique file name I'm okay with that usually I wanted to get this out quickly so I edited it and I got it out quickly but then what we want to think about is okay once I get to this point and you can see these are just counting up right or in this case counting backwards all the way back to 2020 of uh, uh, 906 I've got images that go that far back all the way to September and I haven't done anything with these images as it relates to making the final decisions do I keep it do I trash? What do I do with that image? So I have Lightroom, when I hit the import button, I have Lightroom just categorize everything by date. And I really like the, the ability to categorize by date automatically because it'll everything comes into here, initial imports. Every single thing I shoot without question always comes into this folder right here. And then once I have an opportunity to go through it and I can make a decision, am I going to keep these? Am I going to trash those? What am I going to do with my images? I then will rename those images and then I'll move it into the folder it needs to be in under photos. And so in this case, this is also a Palouse image. It's in Washington. I know that for sure. So when I'm looking at these, at these Palouse images, that's where I'm, I, I put it through that filter saying, okay, is this of the Palouse? Is this what I want to showcase? Is this what I want in my file 
in the Palouse? And when I can make that answer a yes, then it gets a pick or I just leave it alone. And when it's not, it gets the old X. We've seen that already before. And then we've seen how I can move them somewhere else. So this is how I keep on top of my shooting. I don't let anything slide because everything comes through this filtering process. And then, and then when I get to that point of saying, okay, I want to keep it, that's when it graduates to this other process here of filtering and categorizing these images. And so I've already shown you how in this instance with New England, I've of all of the New England states, I've only been to Massachusetts since I've switched to digital. So or ever for photography. So whether it's New York or New Hampshire or Maine, I've not been there at all. So that's why there's only one entry here. But when we look at all of the rest of the Eastern US, you can see basically this is saying, okay, for me, what makes sense? East of the Mississippi, because I've got Maryland. Uh, I have another Massachusetts there, which is bad. I need to consolidate that because I have the New England as well. And that's what's beautiful about this process. I can very easily go ahead and say, you know what, USMA, that needs to move down here. Let's go ahead and take a look at New England. Now, this is also USMA. And so this is 2015. Let's see when these, let's see when these were shot. These are also 2015. So I have a potential overlap going on here. And so I'm not going to fix this problem right now, but that's the beauty of a flexible system like this where I can say, you know what, the code of the image doesn't change, USMA. But the positioning of how I logically store it, it does change for me from time to time. So I need to, this is something I definitely need to do. I need to consolidate these items. I either need to get rid of New England as something or I need to move this over here and it can grow and it can fluctuate with me and then I'm fairly confident anyway, I'm not going to lose anything when I move those things around because it's all about location. I can picture something in my mind and I know where I shot it and then I just have to go through the filing of where I shot it. All right, let's take a quick look also at international. So when I go international, this is from when I shot slide film. So I left the T just so I have a three letter code anyway, but I do the three letter code, then the two letter country code, and then the province code in this case for Canada. Seattle is Chile, Czech Republic, Deutschland for Germany, and uh, Dominican Republic. Uh, I haven't put anything in here yet for my other files where I have some from the Dominican. They still need to be dumped in here though. And then um, you know, Ecuador and HK is Hong Kong and Hrvatska for Croatia. And then if I happen to visit another location a couple of times, like here in India, I went in 2002 and I also went in 2010, then we've got some dated folders there that helps me understand, okay, when was I there? That's when I start bringing dates into the whole system. So that is my process and that is how I categorize images. Again, I really want to stress, do what works for you. And also, if you're disciplined enough, shall we say, in this image from it's Pennsylvania, so I can see USPA, uh, so Pennsylvania, uh, if you're disciplined enough to do the keywording, you can see here I've got bridge, covered, fence, historic, Lancaster, county, so on and so forth. I've got a lot of things there. You can always search that way. We'll get into the search function in part two of the, this um, boot camp here where we look at all things in the library module and we'll learn how to do that. But right now, I just want to stick to strategy and how it is that I think about these things. Now, I told you I would show you one thing that really makes sense if you just want to save everything. And here we go. What I recommend for that, if you just want to save absolutely everything, create one folder for all your photos. And in this case, we could use the photos folder, right? And then when we go to the import module, we can see we've got here, um, let's go ahead and hit copy because we want to copy these images uh, from the little drive that I have and bring them into my library. Well, under here in destination, we want to make sure we select, of course, the proper destination. So we're looking for here on photos, there it is. And this is where I would say this is going to be your target every single time. Now, once again, this is if you want to save them all by date and if you never want to delete anything or at least not be so 
cautious about deleting things or maybe be able to delete them later or whatever the case is. But this will save everything by date order. And then once you set this up, you never have to change it ever again. So that's part of the benefit of doing that because it's just the same process every single time. But what you're going to get is a string of folders and a string of dated folders. Let me show you what I mean here. So if we were to organize by date and then over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it by, let's say, um, by the year, then by the month, which is a number, and then by the day itself, which is also a number. You can see what it's going to do here. We have two different shoots on this particular card. We have the 12th of April and we have the 13th of April. And you can see how it's going to put it in here under photos, under the year, under the month, and then under the, the dates here this way. It's just looking at the metadata on the card and it is giving you this automated file structure according to when those images were initially shot. This can be really tempting, and I have actually been a little bit tempted to switch this direction with my images. I just haven't done it yet, though, because, again, I still think I'm so in that zone of, did I shoot that bird? If you wanted a bird shot or you wanted, again, whatever, did I shoot that when I was in Hong Kong, in Croatia? Did I shoot that when I was in Minnesota or wherever else? Where did I shoot that? That's usually the top thing on my mind, and... Because I think that way, I like the system that I just showed you. But again, whatever system works for you, that's what I want to stress. Put some thought into it. See what can happen with what you're doing with how you categorize your images. And if all else fails, do something like this where you just know everything is going to be organized by the date that you shot it. And you will always be able to, if you want to, go back and recategorize it. Now, if you've got over 10,000 images, like in mine here, I've got 27,000 images just in my photos folder, that could be a huge job to do. And that's not something that I necessarily encourage anyone to take on if you were to recategorize all your images in a, certain, in a different fashion. But this is where when we start from scratch and we're trying to think about this, putting a little bit of thought into it will go a long way. And that's one other thing I want to stress on mine is what I view as the flexibility, the opportunity to not only add more, let's say in this case, more provinces of Canada. If I were to go further in Canada and shoot more in Canada, I just add a BC, I add whatever else, AB for Alberta, so on and so forth. I could do the same thing with Chile. If I were to get into different regions of Chile and focus on Chile an awful lot, then I could separate that out. That's not something at this time, I don't shoot in Chile enough, so I don't need to do that. But it is flexible in case for some reason, I had a reason to go down there 10 different times. All of a sudden, this is going to build onto that and I can, I can separate that out more easily. And that's why I, I like the system, again, for me. Okay, that wraps it up for this talk on what we're dealing with, all these ideas of how we categorize the images. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the preferences, and that will conclude this initial chapter of Lightroom Quick Start Bootcamp, and we'll just see you there. Until then, happy shooting!